Sometimes for the legal analysis, you gotta call in the pros and ask them for some help. Welcome to today's bonus active self-protection lesson. I'm still your host, John Correa. Today I have a bonus lesson for you. I have invited a board certified attorney, one of the best in America, to give us some more legal analysis of one of our videos here on the channel. Now we normally post this kind of stuff on the Active Self Protection Extra channel, but it's so important, I wanted to bring it here to you as well. Hope you enjoy the analysis and it helps you in your understanding of legal use of force. So you can see it is late, it's like 11 p.m. and you see this guy pull over his car. Now look at the top left, you're gonna see his intended victim limping towards and away from him. And as he vectors towards her, he doesn't realize she's an off-duty cop, said he had a gun and so she pulls hers and pops him twice, now is taking follow-up actions. He did not make it, took the asphalt temperature challenge. She was uninjured as she goes into her bag to get her phone and that is where this one ends. Today's video is brought to us by Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders. They are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. Mark, thanks again for being here. I think this is an interesting one. It's one of the more famous videos. It really made the rounds on social media when it first came out um, and, of course, uh, off-duty Brazilian police officer and she's walking home big dude comes out announces that he's armed you can actually see the gun in his hand you got to be careful to see it though she shoots him twice uh, but some people didn't see the gun and so they were like well wait a minute why'd she shoot the guy you know uh, that's that's not cool uh, but we talk about this issue of disparity of force that somebody when they have this concept disparity of force then they can use deadly force when somebody else may not be able to uh, can you explain that to us? First, I got to say, I like this video. Don't you love the videos when um, the bad guy approaches with a gun and uh, the good guy, in this case, a good gal? Yep. Um, yeah, maybe she could have been a little faster, a little more training would have helped. But you know what? She got it done. She and, protected herself? Yeah. Came out okay? This is the way it's supposed to go, yep. right? If, if, assuming we still got bad guys that do bad things. But, um, well, first off, if it's really true, um, well, let's just start from the beginning. If, if she saw the gun, right, there's no problem. No disparity of force problems at no all. No problem at all. Even, so say she doesn't see the gun, so then he just says, I got a gun. I think that's good enough too, because what she believed was that he had a gun, and she shouldn't have to wait and say, no, 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 show me where it is before I can. Right. So I, personally, I think that makes sense to me. Um, and I think that's what the case was here. He sort of announced that he had a gun. So I don't have any issue there. But imagine he doesn't say that. There's no gun you see. There's no gun talked about. You just got a big guy approaching a woman. I think he left his car running. Yep. So, you know, to me, um, is there a risk of death or serious physical injury here? I'm, I'm an easy juror on this one. This seems easy to me. And I, all I got to do is think about this as that that um, female there is my mom, my sister, my wife, my friend, someone like that. Do we really want to have to say, no, you got to fight the guy off before right. you can pull out the firearm? What I say is to the bad guy, if you don't like that result, don't be a bad guy. Don't be aggressive to somebody. Don't so, act like that. So that issue is so, it's a sliding scale because yeah. what makes somebody, what makes for a disparity is so individual. I get asked this question a lot. You could imagine I, I speak to some uh, retirees who right. are in gun clubs and I get this question, hey, you know, I'm 90 years old and I'm, you know, 85 pounds and uh, somebody could punch me in the face and kill me. Um, is that something I should consider? You bet. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely, you bet. Uh, you know, if the guy is 300, the attacker, the bad guy is 300 pounds and you're 100 pounds, that, are you at risk of death or serious physical injury? The answer to me is yes. Yes. If the answer yes. is yes, you're an imminent risk of death or serious physical injury, I think you got to err on the side of, look, I'd ra it's true, I'd rather go through the trial right. than be dead. So it's an interesting thing though, because I get, you know, the general strong, able-bodied male who will say, well, but I don't know if he punches me in the face, I could hit my head on the concrete and die. True. And so that's true, but I don't know that a lot of district attorneys or juries are going to go, yeah, but was it reasonable that it happens all the time? So you're, you, in the gr you're in the gray area here. You have an advantage being a strong, able-bodied male that somebody else doesn't. 
And that's a good thing. You should take that advantage for what it is. Because if I don't have to shoot somebody, then I don't shoot somebody in life. I totally great. agree. It really should be a last resort. Um, but on the other hand, there's a balancing test for it. Mm -hmm. Because if you wait, imagine that woman waits a little bit longer and that guy grabs her. Next thing you know, she's in the backseat of that car and she's going off to be raped or something yep. like that. So I certainly wouldn't want her, uh, I wouldn't want the law to be such that she couldn't have pulled out a gun in that situation and shot the guy. Well, and I think we recognize pretty clearly that most women are physically weaker than men and if a man physically overpowers a woman, he can do her great bodily harm in a big hurry. And so if he's aggressive, then she has disparity of force and can use a greater degree of force. I think that's established. If somebody is medically fragile, you know, yeah. they have, you know, a surgery on their neck or something or they can't move very much, we're not going to have any problems with that. You've got a somebody, right to protect yourself. Somebody who's older, um, those kind of things, that puts them in that place. But, For sure. But I, you said, okay, these other folks, you know, a guy like me, okay, so I have, uh, you know, significant martial arts training and I'm in reasonable shape. And, and so, well, wait a minute. I mean, you, you know, you work out all the time. And so, well, wait, there's a higher standard for you, you know? I'm not sure there's a higher standard there. I would argue if, if let's just say uh, you were being attacked by a guy who's, um, I don't know how much you weigh, but let's just say he's a little bit bigger than you. Okay. Um, and the other side, you use some kind of cell. Let's just say you pulled out your firearm and the guy runs off and now you get charged. And the other side wants to argue, well, you had options because you got some martial arts training. I would probably bring a motion and say that's not relevant to this case. He doesn't have to get into that big fight if he wants. If it was reasonable for somebody of his size and his situation to use the level of force that he used to repel that attack, I, I wouldn't want to say, and the law doesn't say, that every single person's, because everybody's got a different level of everything, Sure. right? The law doesn't have a thousand different, um, you know, standards that we apply. It's generally speaking a reasonable person standard. Would a reasonable person do knowing all the facts? Yeah, but I, I certainly can't say a judge would keep that out. Right. Right. A prosecutor may want to still ask and say, well, you had other options, right? You could have done this. You could have preclusion done that. issues. Right. So we don't know how that shakes out and different judges, frankly, may feel differently about it. So, well, and I think having more capabilities is wise, not from the sure. legal perspective, but from the self-defense perspective. Absolutely. Now I have more options. I have more ways that I can, you know, head off problems and I don't have to worry about it. So I think it's its own good by itself. But I don't think you get less rights to defend yourself because you got more training. That doesn't okay, make sense. Okay, true. But we do say there are protected classes. There are some. Because we say, well, wait a minute, we recognize the particular vulnerability there, and so they get more leeway in the eyes we of the deal, law. We generally deal differently with kids. True. Kids are in a different kind of category. Cops are in a different kind of a hmm. category. Um, but for the average person, uh, you know, the law is going to say a reasonable person in your circumstance. What yeah. would a reasonable person have done? And uh, when you're dealing with self-defense, that word reasonable, it's like ad nauseum. <laughs> it's coming up and coming, it's almost in every jury instruction. It's in, if you read your law, you're always going to see the word reasonable. reasonable. And what does reasonable mean? That's a question for the jury. Yeah, yeah. And reasonable and, can mean different things to different juries. And what's reasonable to a jury in, you know, rural Texas versus suburban San Francisco? We get cases sometimes where you may get a hung jury and you have to try it over again. And the other jury may have absolutely no problem going one way or the other. Yeah. So different juries, even in the same area. I mean, we know people, right? You have, you have neighbors on your street and how radically they their views on things will shift. We know this just from living on the planet. Well, just because someone is on a jury doesn't change that fact. So again, it all cuts in favor of being very, very conservative. Be conservative. Be the good, sane, sober, moral person who does the right thing and uses force conservatively. Yeah, don't, you don't want yourself in a position where you got to spend a bunch of money, hire a lawyer to argue you're on the right side of this gray area. Because even if you win, you still kind of lose. Yeah. Right? You went through a year of misery. Punished with the process. Yes, the process is tough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now guys, you got some knowledge here on that disparity of force. Make sure again, try to stay out of the gray areas because when you put yourself in a gray area, well, that's where bad things can happen to you on the backside. We don't want that. Mark, sure appreciate the information. Thanks for having me.